Chris, is there something you haven't shared with us? <laughs> oh, welcome everybody. Great day to be in church. Um, do you guys know why they call seagulls seagulls? You might figure that one out. Because if they flew in the bay, they'd be bagels. That was pretty exciting. It was really a lot more funny than you're letting on. I don't see how you guys can contain it, man. You know, it's pretty cool. Well, it made you grin anyway. A lot of people don't have a reason to grin. I was thinking uh, this morning as we, the worship team was uh, leading us, uh, if it's probably uh, the most amazing word in Scripture. <coughs> Everything hinges on if. Right? You know, I see people praying all the time that God would heal our land. But the scripture says, God has assigned that to us. And he says, if, big if there, my people, Christians, will humble themselves and pray, seek his face, turn from their wicked ways, and he will heal our land. So it all hinges on us. This if is a huge word. So what that tells me is his people aren't willing to do that. Something needs to change. I was thinking about this song that we sang, If We Are the Body. Guys, that is such a powerful song. Is it? ties right into today's message. And God said, <clears throat> I keep going back, to it. God said, if my people, we all want him to be a sugar daddy. You know, but he doesn't, he doesn't change to our whims. He gave us the word of God and expects us to live it out. And he didn't say it was going to be easy. He just said, do it. You know, if you want easy, then you'll be in the world. But if we are the body, this amazing song today, and it really hit me hard. Why aren't his arms reaching? Because if we are ambassadors of Christ, if is another huge word, if we are the ambassadors for Christ, why aren't his feet going? The gospel isn't presented to the world in here. It's out there. Why aren't we going to tell them? God, something's got to change. We can't continue to be self-centered. Because that's what that is. If you ignore the Word of God and implement your own will, that's self-centeredness. You know, we have got to be His feet. His voice. His hands. His heart. To reach out to the lost and dying world. And you know, there's a there's a lot of responsibility in that because many in the church are not doing that. Even people in the pulpit. They're putting their own needs and their own desires and their own mission above the mission of God. May it not be so at Set Free Flowery Branch. That we would love folks. We would not give them a reason 
to turn their back on the church. You know? If God is love, we need to represent Him as love. Back of my green pickup, it says, you will know us by our, by our love, one for another. That's what the Bible says. So, we're going to be in uh, Second Philippians chapter, Philippians ch chapter 2, verses 12 to 30 today. I, I, I can't emphasize enough how grateful I am that I don't have to figure out what God wants for us. He wrote it down. How simple can it be? And yet so frequently we ignore what he wrote down and implement our own desires. I never pray for a bigger church. That's God's deal. God will provide the increase. I pray for a loving church. That we will accept people no matter how drunk they are when they fall through them doors. I don't care. Because it's the Holy Spirit's job to reach into their hearts. We just need to love them. No matter what they look like, what they act like, what they smell like. We just got to love them, guys. So uh, verse 12 says, Therefore, my dear friends, talking to Christians, <clears throat> as you have always obeyed. He is reiterating to them their behavior. Is, and that's talking, obeyed what? Obeyed the gospel. This is very important. Scripture tells us we need to obey the gospel. Not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Not only on Sunday morning, but when we're out there alone, we're still ambassadors of Christ. 24 7, 365. And whether you're on vacation, no matter what's going on in your life, you are still an ambassador of Christ. And you need to be implementing Scripture, the Gospel. And this says, continue to work out your salvation in the fear and crimson. Continue. That means they're already doing it, but what he's doing now is encouraging them. Because you take a lot of hits out there, guys. What's really cool about coming to church on Sunday here, we come here all beat up, and we get to clean up our wounds and get ready to go out and do it again. Monday through Saturday. Right? I love that, man. We all come with, uh, with different hurts and stuff. And, but <clears throat> keep in mind that Jesus died for everybody. And everybody is important to him. Right? And so we need to consider that when we're talking to people. People that do things differently than us. And even people who vote different than us. Yeah, Jesus died for them too. You know? Didn't he? Yeah, you bet. For it is God who works in you, through you, to will and to act according to his good purpose. Sometimes we don't see the good purpose that he has when we're living out the word of God. But it is good. That's all that God can do is good. Verse 14 is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, do everything. What's left out? Do everything without complaining or arguing. Oh my gosh. This will stir up some amazing behavior in most churches. People get together and form packs to oust the pastor. You know? I mean, 
You can't do that and be humble at the same time, right? If every situation in our life we turn back to Scripture, we'll be able to do that. And then if we obey it, big word in here too, to obey. If we obey the Scripture, we're going to be blessed. Doesn't mean we're going to be rich. It means we're going to be blessed in the eyes of God. Who are we trying to impress? We live for God, not for the eyes of mere men. Right? So let's keep that in, in mind when we're out there doing God's work. It's all about Him. We are the messenger. Amen? So do everything. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do everything without complaining or arguing. There's no unless after arguing. No one left. So, why? So that you may become blameless and pure. If you're arguing, you're to blame. Stop it. Doesn't get anything done. All it does is cause strife. If you want the color, the carpet to change color, fine. But don't cause division because of it. So many things in the church are division over. Petty, carnal stuff. Come on, guys. Let's just focus on loving each other and loving those out there that are unlovable. Because the world's unlovable. Right? But God so loved. It all goes back to Him. Right? So do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault. I love the way you put that in there. If you're complaining or arguing, you're at fault. Stop it. You imagine what God is thinking when he looks down and sees you complaining about the color of the carpet? Just be thankful that we got carpet. You know, isn't that cool? In a crooked and depraved generation. Loving others in a crooked and depraved generation ain't easy. But you know what? It wasn't easy going to the cross either. You know, I don't think any of us in here have suffered like that for the cause of Christ. But we are to give our lives <clears throat> for Him. Every day. When we're at our work, we're still Christians. You know? When you fill out your tax form, you're still Christian. Well, no fruit flew up here and hit me in the head. <laughs> in which, now I was talking about in this generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe. You know, on a good day, that's pretty bright, isn't it? As you hold out the word of life, what is that? The gospel. The gospel. So we're to shine and present the light. We are the light. We don't just carry it. We are the light. in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. Paul is saying here that when he, when he planted the church in Philippi, he gave his heart, his life into that. And now it's like me and the church in Elma, Washington. I get to see them flourishing way more than they would if I'd have stayed. You know, God brings people on board. And so it makes me so happy when I see them posting their baptism services. You know, I mean, it. people are getting baptized. People are getting saved by the thousands. Way bigger than I could have ever taken it. And I am so happy that at one time I could have been a part of that. You know, I was. What a neat thing that is. 
pass the baton so the church may grow. Verse 19, I hope in the Lord Jesus. Our hope is in him. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. We need to be raising up people to send out. You know that? I mean, we don't want to expand the body of Christ by church division. We want to expand the body of Christ by church multiplication. You know, it's it's so cool that that we ha uh, we have a missionary, a family missionary here, that we get to minister to Africa. <laughs> How cool is that? Man, from what I see, they need it over there. You know, we we get up in the morning, brush our teeth, and with running water. Take it for granted. We know that when we turn that faucet, water's going to come out. Well, they they don't have that over there in a lot of places. You know, and so I'm hoping that somehow we can be part of the solution over there. There's got to be something we can do, right? that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you, like I am about Elma, you know. I, mean, I, I'm, I get so happy when I, like I said, when I watch on Facebook and stuff, the videos they post, you know, the services, the guys that are surrendering to the Lord Jesus, that you would look at them and you would think that's not possible. <laughs> Anything's possible to God, right? <clears throat> and then Paul says, I have no one else like him. Paul is saying that I'm sending my best to the disciple out there. Because it's so serious that we have dedicated people, dedicated to Jesus, out there sharing their life. Not always by what they say, but by how they live. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words of necessary. Right? That's all about your life. You'll know them by their fruit, by what they produce. But I have no one else like you who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. For everyone looks out for his own interests not those of Jesus Christ. That is prevalent in what some people call the body of Christ. I believe the body, the real body of Christ is much smaller than most people think. Just because somebody goes to church doesn't mean that they're a Christian. You know? So I think our first ministry is to each other here. Loving each other giving each other hope in this crazy world. But you know that Timothy has proved himself. It's like Pastor Gerald has proved himself. That's why we can launch him out there. Support him. Because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. Proving himself. You know. I hope therefore, so because of that, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. Taking care of the main thing first and then sending out. If we need to be healthy here. Then sending out. <clears throat> and I am confident in the Lord. That's where we need to put our confidence. I'm confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But maybe it's not the right time. We think about that a lot of time. It's, it's all about God's timing, not our own. Verse 25. But I think it is necessary to send back to you Aphrodite, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger 
whom you sent to take care of my needs. Look at this, this is reciprocating. You know? We plant other churches, that church can blossom and even come back and serve here because of their dedication to the Lord Jesus. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. You know, that we need to care about those we send out. You know, and if, if one's hurting, we're all hurting. Whether it's here or somewhere else. But this is showing us how the church was exceedingly concerned about one that they had sent out. Indeed, he was ill, as Paul says, and almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not only, and not on him only, but also on me. To spare me sorrow upon sorrow. It, it hurts us when we see people who name the name of Christ bite the dust, turn back to their old ways. It's sad, and I've seen it many times that set free when people would be wound up on fire and back in a dope house. I really believe that that's what happened to my friend Gary when they just did his funeral. He loved the Lord, but he, his body was weak. He just couldn't overcome. I believe God took him out. Which is good. No more suffering for Gary. Pretty awesome. It says, because of that, therefore, verse 28, I am all the more eager to send him because of his heart condition. Right? Just like us with Gerald. We're excited that we get to be a part of reaching the people in Africa. Man, I love watching his videos. And he, posts, he loves that camera of his, that's for sure. Wow. I think he would have to have it surgically removed from his hand. Yeah. I'm all the more eager to send him so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I may have less anxiety. We'll wrap it up now with verse 29. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy. You know, they're always trying to get me to come visit in Elma. You know, and they're they're excited about seeing me again. I mean I mean I'd be excited to be able to go and just get loved on by those people that Judy and I touched twenty years ago. They're still doing it. Still doing it. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor men like him. Because he almost died for the work of Christ. Willing to give it all. Risking his life to make up for the help you could not give him. Still doing it even without the, the, the proper support. Still doing it day in, day out. Almost cost him his life. So sick. Guys, are we willing to be his hands and his feet and his voice? If we are willing, remember that big word. Change, things change. People's lives change. And we get to be a part of that as God's hands and feet and voice on earth. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it's really all that matters, that we are obedient to you. Lord, I pray that you would send those to encourage us 
Let it begin here. That when people are hurting and suffering that are Christians, that we would be there to love on them, comfort them, speak truth to them. That, that you would bring correction. Because we can't. Thank you for that, Father. I pray that you would uh, bless our food today as we uh, set up and break bread together. What an awesome time it is that we can come together and break bread, fellowship with each other, like-minded believers. How amazing is that? We give you all the glory because it's all yours already. And you're the only one worth honor, and we give it to you. We praise you, Father, here at Set Free Church, because you are worthy of our praise. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.